Ursula Broitin. From Puyallup to Pinehurst, this is Cairo Radio 97.3 FM. News and talk powered by the Pacific Northwest. The Dory Monson Show on Cairo Radio. This is the big lead. Oh, it's good to be back here with you today. We are coming to you from the Carter Subaru studio and streaming on Facebook Live. Welcome to the big show. Did I miss anything last week? Anything happened while I was gone? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Anything happened? Anything going on? That was here? a rough week. I, uh, yeah, not I'll... because our host didn't do awesome. He did great. Sure. But... Yeah, it was that, just exactly. a lot of no, news. Just what was in the news was rough. Oh, yeah. I heard about that. <laughs> that was funny because uh, my wife and I, we went down to Florida I'll, I'll tell you all about the uh, the award show uh, in big lead at, uh, at 1 o'clock. Including whether you won or not. That's yeah. the tease. Yeah, that's the cliffhanger there. <laughs> so, uh, But we spent all day Thursday sitting in a hotel room watching all of the, the testimony. And it was uh, – and, and then I'm, I'm thinking, I should be on the air. I should be back home. I should have been there. Back. I'm, I'm feeling guilty that I'm sitting down in Florida – Watching all of this because I should have been here with you. So, uh, so yeah, that's uh, I you gotta never leave us again. That nah, I'm, never, I'm never going anywhere ever again. That's that's except what for London next week, yeah, except for that. Maybe, <laughs> maybe we'll see. We'll see what happens in the news. So, anyway, we'll talk about uh, a lot of that a little bit later this afternoon, but we got a lot of news to get to. Let's get right into the big lead. <laughs> The big lead, top story. Coming up, at, we got great guests coming up uh, a little bit later today. At 1.30, I'm going to talk with a local woman named Maria Ball. She's training for the New York Marathon, and she was uh, out for a run about 6.30 Friday morning in the Green Lake Ravenna neighborhood when a presumed homeless guy came out of nowhere and uh, grabbed her her breast and her crotch area, and she screamed. She talked to Q13 News about what went down. I shoved my elbows back, and I screamed as loud as I could because I knew my life was at risk. I didn't know if he had a weapon. I didn't know if he was going to shove me in the back of the van. I didn't know what was going to happen to me. Maria is going to come on with us at 1.30 this afternoon because, once again, it illustrates how our politicians have let the streets of our, not our city, our entire region, this is happening all over the Puget Sound area, and we're letting the drug addicts just take over the streets. They're assaulting women. She filed a police report, and we will talk to Maria at about one uh, 1.30. This afternoon. Also, coming up at the bottom of the hour, 12.30, Brock Heward, the Monday Monson quarterback, will join us. And we'll talk about that Seahawk game yesterday. But perhaps even more than the result of the game, it's the one incident as Earl Thomas got injured. And Arizona is a point away from tying this up. Rosen with the first touchdown pass of his NFL career, likely won't be the last. And a Seahawk player stays down at about the 10-yard line, and it looks like Earl. It is. It was Earl Thomas. The same injury he had a couple of years ago. Fractured his lower left leg, the tibia, and it is uh, no doubt season-ending. It's no doubt his last play ever with the Seahawks. And you all saw what happened, that as he was being carted off the field, he flipped off the Seahawks sideline. What a shame. And we're talking about one of the greatest players ever to wear a Seahawks uniform and his final image as a Seahawk is flipping off the Seattle sideline. And we'll talk a lot with Brock Heward about that. Brock talked to Pete Carroll about it this morning. And, uh, Coach had a lot of interesting things to say, so I'll play you what Pete Carroll had to say, and we'll talk with Brock Heward about that sad end to Earl Thomas as a Seahawk. So that's the Monday Monson quarterback that's coming up at 12.30 this afternoon. But there's a lot of other news going on. Next up in the big lead. The big lead, big local. So, as I was watching the Kavanaugh hearings down in Florida, and I'll get into that a little more in depth, and I know that it got talked to death late last week, but I haven't had a chance to to share my thoughts. 
We have a local version of the Kavanaugh story happening here in our state. A woman has accused Republican State Senator Joe Fain of having raped her back in 2007. And this woman, her name is Candace Faber, she detailed for KUOW and on Twitter what she says happened back in 2007. Joe Fain has categorically denied this allegation. And this illustrates, you know, whether it's the Kavanaugh thing or the Joe Fain thing, but this illustrates these perilous times where we're in. Because I have no idea about the Joe Fain thing. I haven't heard him talk about it. I haven't heard this woman. I've read her accounts. I've reached my conclusion about the Kavanaugh thing. I'll tell you about that in just a few minutes here. But an allegation that serious... Of course, it should be investigated. And both Democrat and Republican leaders in our state say that they want this allegation against Senator Joe Fain thoroughly investigated. Jay Inslee's office has said the same thing. And I would echo that. This is a serious allegation. It deserves to be investigated. Where we are in such perilous times is, I will tell you, one of the standards that we have, we will have people email us all the time, text us, and they will tell us about some crime that they were victimized by. And one of the first questions we always ask is, did you file a police report? Because I cannot simply take the word of somebody who gets hold of us and they allege something, and put them on the air. That would be an irresponsible way to do the show. And by most news organizations' journalistic standards, you have to have some corroborating evidence, or like I said, a police report is kind of the minimum standard. You cannot just take somebody's word and go on the air with it. But in the world of politics today, that's what we are doing because it has proven to be, uh, and and like I said, these allegations might be true, but they might not be true. And that's the one perspective that seems to be completely missing in all of these conversations. We are supposed to just take the word of people who, you know, did not file a police report at the time, who don't have any evidence. They are are just talking about it, you know, in the case of Joe Fain, 11 years later, in the case of, of Brett Kavanaugh, 36 years later. And we're supposed to take somebody's word on it. And I will tell you that I have seen the most vile in humanity I'll, I could open up my email box. I mean, some of the things, because people you know, disagree with me on political or social issues. And they have said some things about me, like the fact that I coached my three daughters in basketball and loved it and wanted to be a part of, uh, you know, bringing, educating, coaching, teaching, life lessons that come through sport, that I wanted to keep doing that even after my daughters graduated. And people have said the most hideous, vile things. So I know a little bit about how people will, because they disagree with you politically, socially, they will say some of the worst things imaginable about a person. And so from that perspective, I understand that, yes, we got to investigate these things. I also understand that there are some hideous, horrible human beings who will say crap about somebody because they don't like their political or social views. And so that kind of informs my perspective on how I look at these stories. Now, the Joe Fain thing needs to be thoroughly investigated, and I I have no opinion on whether this allegation is true or not. I haven't heard from – we've invited uh, both the woman and Joe Fain to come on the show. I'm hoping that they will respond uh, sometime soon. But here's what this woman, Candace Faber, alleged happened to her. She was graduating from a master's program at Georgetown University in 2007. And what she told KUOW 
is that uh, as she was graduating, her parents who lived here in Washington State, uh, she wanted to impress them as they went back to D.C. for her college graduation. She scheduled a tour of congressional buildings on Capitol Hill for them. She got some special passes. And she and her parents stumbled into a reception where they met, as Faber put it, a tall, blue-eyed, conventionally attractive Republican guy. And that was uh, Joe Fain. So Ms. Faber was 23 years old. He was 25 years old at the time. He was... Not a senator then. He was just working his way up in the world of politics. So they started chatting. She says he offered her his business card. She said to KUOW, I know that I was flirting with him, and I know that I felt, like, successful in getting his card and proving to my parents that I was going to be good at life. She came out as a lesbian last year, but in 2007, she was still struggling with her sexuality and wanting to please her conservative parents. After the graduation ceremony, she was driving to her class's after party at a D.C. bar. Her father asked if she had contacted that nice young man, meaning Joe Fain. They met in Congress. Uh, She said that she then texted Fain to invite him to the after party at the bar. When Fane showed up, Faber said that he bought her drinks and they danced and kissed on the dance floor. She said she remembered feeling like she had made it, but still felt pressure to resolve her conflicting feelings about her sexuality. She had sought counseling about this, and uh, she said Fane represented a chance to prove she was going to be fine. She says that Fane continued to drink. He got loud and obnoxious. She said she was holding him up on the dance floor, which was difficult because he was a much bigger person than her. And she asked him to leave, but he insisted he was too drunk to get to his hotel alone. He insisted on basically not leaving unless I walked him, she said. Faber said she told her friends that she would return to the party after dropping him off at his hotel. That he was kind of dragging his body over hers as they were going to the hotel. And she said she was going to deposit him in his room and then get back to the party with friends. But when they got to the hotel room, she says suddenly he wasn't bleeping weak anymore and he had no problem throwing me on the bed and ripping my dress off. She uh, repeatedly told Fane to stop. She said she stood up and asked if he had a, she asked, he asked if she had a condom. She said she didn't, but he raped her anyway. I remember that that was when I decided to look out the window. She says she does not remember how that part of the night ended, but she told, I don't know if this was, she told the Seattle Times or she said this on Twitter, but she said at the end of the night, she asked him for a kiss. Good night. She didn't file a police report because she was worried about reactions from her parents And she said, plus, I didn't think anyone would believe me or that if they did, they wouldn't care. Uh, Ms. Faber, she had a mental health breakdown last year. She says she was diagnosed with a psychosis triggered by a buildup of traumas, including this alleged rape. Uh, She also said that she's had several, uh, been the victim of several sexual assaults. She told KUOW that uh, in high school she was sexually assaulted. She said that in college she had passed out after a night of drinking and was sexually assaulted then. She says she was sexually assaulted by Senator Joe Fain as well. Okay, obviously this needs to be investigated. But I also know that there are an awful lot of people who are just automatically believing her story and, and saying that, you know, why would, why would somebody put themselves through this? And they're saying the same thing about Christine Ford. And what I do know is that people use things like this on occasion, that sometimes they're true, and sometimes people for political and social reasons, and and we're talking about the highest levels of power here. You know, nationally, a seat on the Supreme Court that, you know, 
50% of the country doesn't want to see go to this guy. 50% do. But well, do people go to extraordinary lengths when we're talking about the most powerful positions on earth? Yeah, it's, that's a possibility. It is not certain. So we'll wait to see. And as I said, I've uh, invited both uh, Ms. Faber, the accuser, and State Senator Joe Fain uh, to come on the show. I'd like to hear their sides of things. That is one where I have absolutely no idea if it's true or not. I will tell you, after watching all the Kavanaugh stuff on Thursday, my wife and I sat and watched it. And uh, I heard everybody talk about how compelling Christine Ford's testimony was. And it kind of was. But I, I also thought that, you know, she came across and maybe maybe she's you know loony because she truly was a victim. But she didn't seem credible to me. And I know a lot of WIMP who have reached that same conclusion. Uh, Kavanaugh, I, I believed his testimony. I, I believed his passion. And I told you last week that if he actually did what he's accused of, that there would have been a far different political and public relations strategy that he would have embraced. And that is, yeah, we were drinking, we had a party, we had sex together. I don't know why she's going with this. I mean, there are lots of ways this thing would have been painted and colored if, uh, if it went down the way Christine Ford alleges. But, man, I tell you what, the pressure of somebody makes an accusation, you must believe it. It's ridiculous. Uh, sometimes they're true and sometimes they aren't. But the the mania, and I'm watching this weekend, the absolute rip job done on Kavanaugh and his testimony Saturday Night Live, uh, John Oliver's show last night, all the late night shows. It's uh, They've all made up their minds. And you apparently are not allowed to say anything that doesn't follow the politically correct opinion. Well, I don't believe that we should give an opinion just because everybody is demanding it. So we'll talk a lot more about all of this. That, for now, is your big lead for today. The Big Lead on Cairo Radio. The other huge local story, the Seahawks, Earl Thomas flipping off the Seahawks sideline, all things that I'm going to talk with Brock Heward about. The Monday Monson quarterback. That's coming up next here on the Dory Monson Show. This hour of the Dory Monson Show is brought to you by.